In this video, I'm going to release the beast. Today is the day, my friends. Mankind turned ravenous beast in the field, supping itself on the still living flesh of other chaos supplicants. We're talking about the untamed beasts, or should I say, unchained. UNCHAINED! Berserker Riser Coffee in a Warhammer Weekly mug. How's that? This week, we're going to take a look at my process on the Untamed Beasts, one of the factions out of the Warcry starter set. I picked the box up uh, not too far in the past, and I'm set to create kind of a grim dark. Well, of course, it's in the Age of Sigmar, but I want this kind of rough, rugged Blanchitsu style. I have the chance to control what both of the factions look like, what all the scenery is, what the gaming table becomes, so it's, it's a fun project. The whole thing is, is coming together to be kind of a, its own combined piece of art. Individually, the models, I'm kind of cutting some corners here and there and just doing what looks cool, creating a recipe. It's always a lot of fun, so please enjoy this process and let's paint this muscled man. In the beginning, our humble planeswalker was given a base coat of black and next loaded up in the old paint lauber as some dark camo green from the monument primer line. I'll be spraying it in a zenithal fashion, going for that top down light source. Just get some volumes established quickly. Now that we have some volumes established, it's time to bust out the base coats. I have some black gray from Vallejo, some black. I'm going to make that black gray just a little bit more blacker. Deepen that down a little bit and then every little bit of his kit that isn't fur, underwear, or a bony spike will be rendered as black leather. So we'll just be putting a coat over all of these straps. Give the wrist a tap. I will also be laying down a healthy coat of Crick's Bane base on his base. Uh, make sure to push it into every little crack and crevice. There's a lot of texture on this base so I don't want to miss anything. You can add water to make sure things run into the right place but just make sure that you give it a healthy dousing. Next up on all of the models underwears as well as flowing uh, loincloths, underwears in the case of this guy, we'll grab some battle dress green from P3 and I'm just kind of blocking in that mid to upper portion. You'll be able to see this in, in a to a larger effect when we see the entire group of models finished. But for now, just pay attention to these cheeks. To get the weapons and all the bony spikes started off, I have some green brown from Vallejo. And the same case as his little uh, bum covering. Take a little paint off. I'll be painting in the mid to upper areas, but laying down an extremely textured coat of paint. I'm not sweeping, I'm just kind of touching down, pulling upwards. Maybe a few uh, broad areas will get some edge highlights, but I want these bones to look very equal amounts lethal as well as crusty. So. Take your time, lay down a few passes just to make sure that the color is nice and saturated over that dark base coat. Lock his spike in as well. All the little, he has a lot of trinkets, a lot of fangs and talons 
decorating the little bits of clothing that he has on. I think this is the faction for me. They've they kind of got it all. Leather, bones, big muscles. I mean, please pa pause the video and turn back if this doesn't sound like the kind of gang you'd like to be in. Thanks for continuing to watch. Let me finish off these highlights and we'll jump back. Coat of bone complete. Let's jump over to the bloodstone and attend to these pelts. There are certain areas of the model where I am pulling my punches, rendering the detail in one or two colors on top of that zenithal spray. This pelt is an example of one of those areas. I want to spend more time on the, the skin and the bones, which I guess is most of the model. But if I can get it in focus, get this pelt rendered like so. So as I'm kind of trailing off towards the bottom portion of the pelt, I may leave the bloodstone highlights off of it completely. But as we get to this more rounded out, exposed area on top of the shoulder, I'm adding heavier amounts of bloodstone. So just working with a, a single coat of paint, but laying down a more heavy, a heavier saturated amount on top of it is creating still a bit of a progression, but I also see this as a time saver because it is just one color of paint. Go around the edge and just on the top side of the flap, just like so. And I'm good. Stepping right along in the process, I have some deck tan from Vallejo, which is effectively a very light, neutral, kind of warm gray. Well, maybe light and warm. I don't know about neutral, it is fairly bright, but anyways, don't listen to my mouth, watch my hands. Laying some kind of liney, textured highlights in place again, where the bandolier goes up on top of his shoulder. It's a little more exposed, so I've added just a little more splitting and cracking. Um, again though, we're, I just want to make these models look cool and like a fun group of, of friends to hang out with. They don't need to be perfect. You can take this in a more tedious direction and edge highlight every single strap, or like in the case of this handle, I can just kind of draw highlights parallel with the texture that is sculpted in place. I'm happy with that. You can get more detailed with it. Everyone is going to have their own spin, or perhaps you don't have all the same colors that I have. Don't worry about executing this exactly. Just enjoy, absorb, and create your own method. Or copy mine. That's cool too. That's what we're here for. With those ragged highlights laid in place, I could get to a little more time-consuming stage in this process. Went over to house favorite Vallejo Buff, and I want to start highlighting his skin. Pull out the scars. I can add scars as well. Add some scratches and dents that may not be sculpted onto the figure. Make the muscles look more corded, more go from ripped to jacked in a sense. We already have a little pectoral texture sculpted in place. Why not paint a little more? But the same rules apply that we uh, are seeing with the pelt on his shoulder. Just through saturation and going back for a couple more layers, I'm able to build up brighter areas on the skin. And I'm keeping my highlights targeted to the Kind of starting in the mid zone and sweeping to the upper portion, trying to leave that green to black airbrushed shadow progression visible. At 
The skin and the weapons are the two pieces that I want to look a little extra cool on this model, so I'm going to take a little more time than some of the less important areas. Oh yes, with dry skin stage complete for now, I can start picking out some of the bone areas. I have Screaming Skull from Citadel on my brush. And with that same textured approach in mind, I'll be applying some highlights, I'll be going a little finer. I do not want to completely cover the previous layer, but we will Tap this progression along. We're starting to see some contrast. He's looking cool. And most of these small spikes that are sticking out of the wrapping, I can just kind of give them a little tap or a sweep. If they have some harder edges, I'll just pick those out. With those stages complete, I can get back to the fun part and the reason I've been kind of wrapping everything up the way that I have. In the airbrush, I have 80% black paint, 20% sepia ink from FW Ink, and dilution. So you've got a black and a brown mixture, diluted it well enough to spray through the airbrush. I popped the model off of the base so I could get a better angle for what I'll be doing spraying upwards very gently I'm gonna go too heavy at first just gradually moving things along spraying upwards in a sort of anti-zenithal fashion 
can see it's helping to kind of unify a lot of these shadows, tie everything together as it's all sinking down to the same depth, making some of that texture from these transitions disappear, throwing a slight shadow over others. But very gradually, because you can get a lot done with the airbrush, you can make very fast mistakes, and just on the notion of kind of laying down multiple thin layers versus one layer that might possibly be too heavy, you know, just be careful. Sidebar, I don't want to leave this out of the video. The model being painted up for our little example doesn't have any large protruding horns, so plenty of other models do. But they also don't have quite an open pose for the ease of painting and viewing for a tutorial. So real quick, We'll paint up one of these horns. It was just a wet blended progression between Vallejo Black and Buff. All right, let's blend that out. And once that's dry, take a little bit of Screaming Skull touch of highlighting along the middle and upper ridge, pressing very lightly so I can just touch the upper areas of those grooves. And then also closer to the base of his helmet, I'll with Screaming Skull just paint on some highlights. Okay, back to the Planeswalker. Airbrushing complete, it's time for some final touches. We have a few stages to move through yet. I have Kato Red Base, as well as Vallejo Buff. I'll mix the two together until I get, I'm not going for pink, but I want an off red. <laughs> I, pink, in a way. Just uh, not quite the powder pink that we're used to most of that off of my brush and very thin glaze-like amounts. I want to pull out certain areas that may be a little more flushed from action. The elbows, the knees, a little touch around the scars. That was unexpected. The ears. knuckles and the idea is to work with the transparency here so you don't want to be completely covering the previous layer it's better to work in thinner controllable amounts <laughs> I guess we'll make his cheeks red as well but if this isn't vibrant enough for you you're working with diluted paint so it's going to dry it will be less saturated. So you can always go back and just add another thin coat. And maybe I just generally want to place some of this into the mid-tone. Just get a little touch of that Frazetta look. This uh, warms the model up nicely as well. Yeah, just a little hint, get this nice sketchy painterly look to everything. You can always recover what's lost with some Vallejo buff highlights. Down on the base, real quick, I'll take some of that green brown again from Vallejo. Thick amount. Um, I left this part out. I was, I was airbrushing earlier and unifying everything with a shadow and I knew the base would would get a lot of it. You know, it, it would end up being a lot more dark than I wanted it to be, so I just saved the highlighting stage until afterwards. So just kind of imply a bit of a spotlight in 
in this front portion of the base. Let's make sure that I get a nice vibrant heavy coat of paint laid down. Use the side of the brush to sort of pick up on some of these textures. I'll acknowledge it a little bit in the back, but I do want it to be most heavily lit on the front side, add a sense of action to the model, a little bit of forward momentum. And finally, time to cap everything off with some ivory or buff highlights. So I'll have Screaming Skull in the case of the bones, weaponry, bones, jewelry, all the same material, all the same paint job. Just very, very slightly. Just, you know, pulling things a little bit up out of that murk, but not going too hard. Want to maintain this kind of darker look to everything, allowing more mid-tone and shadow to show through. Just capping it off with small, sharp amounts of a highlight. And yeah, can't resist on the pelt. Maybe more that upper area where we concentrated a more saturated amount of bloodstone. Bring an ivory highlight into place. Just using the side of the brush. Not even completely uh, covering anything up. And then on the skin, using Vallejo Buff, maybe some of these areas where the scars were lost, or I want to add a little more texture to the knees. Bring up that final little highlight on these muscles. Polish off that pectoral very lightly, you know, add a little bit more of that muscle texture, the taut corded muscles granted by the chaos gods. Well, not really granted because in Warcry you're trying to earn favor, but the gods will never notice you if you're not already lifting weights. Maybe on the hair as well. I may have left it off, but it's highlighted just like the leather. Just that dark black gray with the Vallejo deck tan highlight. So a little touch of the ivory. I have the time. The hair is a very small feature on the model. And maybe in some areas where the paint can breathe a little bit more, I can thin it down a little bit, stipple some texture on top. You know, just paint it to your own satisfaction. This isn't necessarily a one, two, three, it's a recipe. You can jump back and forth in steps, you know, do, do not restrict yourself. That's why we use wet palettes. It's very efficient and it's easy to jump back and correct our mistakes. Also on the loincloths, let's get that highlighted up. Just a little touch of the screaming skull. And I do suppose I'll take some of this screaming skull and just pick out the eye. The little white dot it looks spooky and chaosy enough. Can't just ignore the eyes, but I don't care too much about, you know, nailing it, logging them in, painting the pupils. These are just a uh, tabletop cool quality. And cool is in the eye of the beholder. Finish these up, and we will have a look at the mess we have made. Brutal! That's what I hope to be saying after I win every game of Warcry. There are a few steps that I left out. Correction, one couple of steps. The small metal bits received a highlight of Vallejo Silver, and the rims of the base were painted with Crixbane base. I know, key steps. Highlighting metal that is easier seen than explained and painting a flat rim of a base. Riveting stuff. 
You will also notice as we pan across these figures that one is not like the others. The uh, big boss man, looking a little more pinkish than the rest of the faction, was painted up during a private lesson session with a uh, student of mine here on Patreon. I don't know what to do with this guy. Do I buy a new one and paint him to match the rest of the faction? Do I have this pink warrior just run around? I'll figure it out later. I'll play some games first and decide if I even like what I'm doing. Thank you for tuning into this video. Please let me know how you feel in the comments section down below. Any uh, questions you may have that I can add to this learning. And as always, I appreciate your support. So when you kick open that door and you walk into that cold world, add a little brightness. Start painting what lies around you because everything is always better when it's painted.